personality. Let's look at some religious animation. And no one else shall you serve. No one! Specifically, let's look at the laziest, most ludicrous jumble junk piles that kids have ever had to roll their eyes through. Whether it be religious Lego movies, or just abysmal video bring Quado style animation. I'm always ready to go to Bible Town. I pity the kids who had to put up with these catastrophes growing up. So let's check out the top six worst religious animated movies. And while I'm personally not a religious person, I do understand if these movies might mean a lot more to you than they do to me. Keep in mind, it's just my silly personal opinion. And hopefully, we can all just have some fun with some lousy animation. Anyway, uh, on, on to the countdown. Number six. The Ten Commandments. Well, blow the man down, me hearties. It's a Moses movie, because we've never seen that before. God has commanded it. Let my people go. Seriously, why would you even bother trying to make another Moses movie after DreamWorks' Prince of Egypt in 1998? Like, you should have just stacked up your Bibles and trudged back to Sunday school after seeing that thing was even made. Well, let's pull out our good old animated movie abomination checklist. Do we have creepy cheap 2000s animation models with no apparent personality and effort whatsoever? Yeah, that's a check all right. Ooh, they're even kind of horrifying when you see them up close. That's a double check. Do we have a tedious, barely comprehensible story with the richness of a stale slab of rye? Yep, that's a check. Do we have hammy, overzealous voice acting worthy of a Golden Ham Award? I'd kill anyone who mocks Pharaoh's law. Oh, wonderful. I'm dreading the sermon already. But what can we learn from this Ten Commandments movie? Thou shall not cast Christian Slater as Moses. We wouldn't want you to have a stomach ache now, would we? He plays our hero Moses with a humdrum enough performance to make you question how he ever worked outside a bus terminal again. He sounds like a nasally version of Bing Bong from Inside Out. Diversion! What? I look like a lot of people. Fortunately, he did later find a more suitable role in Milo Murphy's Law. And, uh, Jesus in the Passion Lego movie. You've heard the story before. But for the two people that haven't, our hero is Moses and he grows up with Pharaoh. Pharaoh's a big jerk to his people, so the big guy himself goes on a genocidal rampage to teach him a lesson. He sends them locusts, frogs, darkness, boils, rain, it's... Just, just a bloody mess. The slaves and Moses are off across the desert, but Pharaoh says, nah, and his army ends up getting dumped in the ocean by the big guy. Then we watch Moses get frustrated at his people because <gasps> they need to eat and drink over years in a desert. How dare they? And on the subject of the big guy, Elliot Gold is hideously miscast as the big guy's voice. It sounds more like God's now HAL 9000 from a space odyssey. Hear now my words, my children. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. It probably would have been better to call it Ugly Moses. Actually, it probably would have been better to incinerate this film, box up its remains, and dump them in the ocean. Don't you realize he loves you? That's why he's about to brutally murder and incinerate you, for doubting him after he made you walk starving and dehydrated for years through a desert. Yeah, that's a kind god. You're not gonna make this an easy list, are you? And for number five, Noah's Ark by Enchanted Tales. Oh yes, my friend, this is a thing. I'm gonna believe in the Lord and the power. And my world needed this. Our buddy Noah singing hip hop. Did you know Noah could sing? Noah's a hip hop king, man. Oh boy. This animation just really says it all, doesn't it? We're at jet lag level toilet seat tentacolino animation here. To start with, the colors are just blaring over saturated fugliness. And where's all the flooding? I may not personally like the Bible stories, but the title Noah's Ark promises me carnage. Vengeful deities flooding the world to slaughter their people. If you're gonna force kids to hear these stories, don't just show them a bunch of dancing animals. At least tell them the full story of what the god you're telling them to worship did. All I'm getting here is happy chappy animals belting out songs on how I need to believe in the gospel. And even on the occasions Noah does show up, it's mostly to shake a jolly jig as the animals proclaim how they believe. 
This Noah's Ark movie is so incompetent that it doesn't even manage to accurately tell the story of Noah's Ark. And for number four, Bible Town. And believe it or not, that title actually has more effort and creativity put into it than the movie itself. Imagine if Video Brinquado somehow got even more lazy, then they got a religious agenda instead of just the agenda of scamming grandmothers. Are you ready for our next adventure in Bible Town? I'm super ready! These aren't children we're looking at, they're creepy drones programmed purely to serve and worship their deity. I could do a 30 minute commentary on this first 5 minutes alone. I was so excited to head to Bible Town today, I couldn't fall asleep last night. Really? Bible Town was that fascinating to you? My mom warmed me up a glass of milk and read me a Bible story. Then I could sleep. These children are just creepily dead inside. Totally. But then after 10 minutes, they just say, screw it, who needs animation? And then they just start showing us random Bible stills that don't even suit what they're saying half the time. Totally. They don't even try to lip sync these guys. Isn't it awesome? So, are you going to tell me what we're up to today? I can't wait to hear all about it. We're going to Bible Town. Oh, uh, thanks, but I'm actually a secular humanist. Not anymore. You're one of us now. Join us in Bible Town. And it just goes on like this for 90 minutes. This isn't even biblically accurate. Why are we showing Jeebus during the first Adam and Eve stage? I haven't fully read the Bible since I was nine, and even I know Jeebus probably didn't show up till 33 BC. And didn't you know? Jesus lived in a yellow submarine. And I love how when we talk about slaying children, we're using bright and colorful, happy looking images with hearts all over the place. In fact, the voice actually sounds kind of happy about murdering them. Seek the young child to destroy him. And finally, we get to the promised land. Check it out, down there, is that... Bible Town! And it's... it's... it's a small farm. No, wait, now it's a cat-themed Candyland town. Bible Town, everyone. I could go on, but I think you've seen enough now to know that Bible Town is a creepy, smeared mess of animation with no apparent effort, character, or originality whatsoever. Totally. And the third worst religious animated movie is The Lion of Judah. Oh, gee, we're really going this route, aren't we? By 15 seconds into the trailer, I already loathed Judah with the fury of a thousand suns, and was hoping the pig was on its way to the deli counter. My name is Judah, and I can do anything. <gasps> You may have also noticed the churning in your stomach just by looking at some of these faces. Turn off, Dada! <laughs> what is this? Five nays at Freddy's? <laughs> uh, seriously though, Lynch would be proud. His influence lives on in these second-rate animated religious films. Judah is one of those animals with boundless annoying energy. Purely happy and excited for the sake of being happy and excited, I guess. <laughs> oh my! What, what, what? Freedom! The animals all feel like they're pandering to the kids and it just feels like a sad grab for attention. So the story is Judah the Lamb is trying not to get sacrificed since Jesus just got crucified a week ago and hasn't pulled off his uh, reappearing act yet. And everyone's really into sacrificing lambs around this time of year, I guess? The sad part is this is about the highest budget animated film the American faith-based market gets. I may not agree with the deities they worship, but that doesn't mean I want their kids to get garbage like this. Whatever one person wrote the description describes the movie as a heartwarming account of the Easter story as seen through the eyes of a lovable pig, a faint-hearted horse, and an adorable lamb. In reality, you're looking at a set of characters so recycled and generic that they probably have environmentally friendly stickers stuck on their rears. But apparently people liked it, and apparently Jesus is their king of kings, so, you know, who am I to judge? And the second worst religious animated movie is... The Lego Passion Movie. Traitor! Tch! <laughs> Run! Jesus! Peter, Run! Who lives Run, by the sword Jesus! dies by the sword. Oh yes, this exists. In fact, nine versions of Lego Jeebus exist. And believe it or not, this was my favorite version. Maybe I should be annoyed by this, but this is actually far more entertaining than Mel Gibson's version. Look, the kid even got tiny details like Lego blood on the Lego sword. Are you a king? 
That's what your own people and chief priests tell me you claim to be. Sure, it may be the dodgiest stop motion I've ever reviewed, but I still would much rather see this young man's work become massively popular in theatres than the original Passion. <coughs> Jeepers, how can people call SpongeBob a bad influence compared to this stuff? It may be silly, but damn this young man has put some heart into making this. This guy tells a story like it happened. No happy chappy holy music, no overly dramatic close-ups of Jesus crying out with overbearing choir music. Jeebus simply gets up, has a terrible day, but then does his reappearing trick a couple of days later. <laughs> and before we check out number one, I just want to do a quick honorable mention. The Legend of Buddha. Hell yeah, finally! A story about Siddhartha. The Buddha is awesome. Sure, the animation's plasticky and the English dub is pretty shoddy, but it's actually a reasonably good retelling of the Buddha's journey. It's friendly, colourful, and gets its story across, and not filled with sing-song hymns to try and force believing into the kids' minds. It's like they actually want the kids to decide for themselves. This one's okay. It's on YouTube, and I've left a link in the description if you're curious. Anyway, on to number one. And the number one worst religious animated movie is... The Prince of Egypt by Dingo Pictures. Oh boy. Dingo Pictures, the 2D equivalent to Video Brinquado, attempted a Bible movie. And this is by far the most disjointed story, the ugliest, choppiest animation, just the most broken movie on this list. So we start the story off strong with a snake narrating. A snake narrating the religious tale. Because it's not like the snake's ever done anything that might not make it a good storyteller for the Bible. Good job, Dingo. Good job. Lip syncing is, of course, never considered. The mouth movements just open and close randomly for maybe five frames. The voice acting's broken English barely ever makes sense. But lo and behold, we do get to meet the big guy himself in this movie. And God talks like a broken gramophone robot. It actually kind of sounds like the big guy is making fun of himself when he talks. It's not even biblically accurate. I haven't read the Bible since I was nine, and even I know there's not a Passar festival. There's a Passover, and there's tons of other story inconsistencies too. So even its target audience is being insulted. It's like Dingo Pictures made this to make fun of religion. Which is fine, I mean I'm doing that a bit myself, but their target audience is probably not going to appreciate being made fun of. In my opinion, Dingo's Prince of Egypt is the worst religious animated movie that's ever been released. But with a few exceptions like these, I think most animation companies realize that teaching kids to be kind people should always come before religious incentives. For example, as VeggieTales has matured over the years and their audience has grown to a larger amount of people, it realized it could do far more good in the world by teaching kids about being a good friend or just helping others when they're in need. That's it. That's all you need to do. And it's my hope anyway, that most religious groups will prioritize teaching kindness to others over making sure their kids believe the same things they do. Whatever you choose to believe, make sure it's a belief that you personally chose and not chosen for you by someone else. Now we know! And knowing is half the battle. Jesus.